In the summer of 2021, IBC introduced software version 2.0. This functions identically to version 1.10.3.1, except it introduces an easier to navigate menu structure, which we'll explore in this video. Here is the new enhanced user interface or UI. Right now, we're on the home page. The top bar displays the boiler model. This lighter area near the top is the boiler status. Next in the center area of the screen, you'll see a supply temperature, return temperature, and water pressure. Optional sensors will also be displayed here if they've been wired to the controller. The bottom bar is color coded. A green bar displaying the time means there are no errors present. Yellow indicates a warning and red indicates an error. If the unit is in an error state, there will also be a view error logs button in the top status area, which you can touch for further information. Let's clear that. Along the bottom, you'll find four tabs for quicker navigation. Home, the page we're looking at now. Whenever you're on a different page, you can use the tab to get back to this home page. Setup. This is equivalent to Express Setup on previous versions. Status. This shows much of what was previously in Diagnostics and More, which is for miscellaneous settings. So let's start with Setup. Here you can see four different loads. This is the go-to menu to enable and edit loads on a new installation. If you wish to run multiple pumps at the same time, you'll set up a load and link to others by defining them as zone of. One thing that's different on this new version is these up and down arrows. Previously, you had only the sidebar for scrolling up and down for longer pages, but these new arrows are easier for fingers. The setup tab will have the settings necessary for most installations. Next is status. Boiler status gathers into one menu all the sensor inputs, the heat input, and except for older models, the flame current. Boiler information is where you'll find your boiler model and current version of the software. Load status is where you can find runtime, priority, and other load details, including load history graphs. Under sensors and channels, you'll find the current values for all sensors attached to the boiler. ATD channels is for internally IBC US only. The error log has been improved, now in a historical list format. The number of times a particular error has occurred is in brackets, and by selecting the type, you have access to all the recorded details. You do not need to delete the errors to reset the boiler. You can also see clear error here now. Previously, it was under advanced diagnostics. This is where you can clear an error status to allow the boiler to attempt to fire. When successful, you will see the red bar at the bottom of the screen change to green. Network information is where you can find details such as your current IP address, portal status, and MAC address. SIM stands for Safety Ignition Module. This tab is used for diagnosing the SIM as well as demonstrating for an inspector the operation of the low water cutoff and water high limit safety circuits. You won't find this submenu on older models that weren't built with a SIM. And finally, we get to the More tab. Under User Settings, you can adjust the time, date, unit settings such as Celsius or Fahrenheit and find an override schedule. Advanced Setup is comparable to installer settings on previous versions. This is where you can enable and edit advanced load parameters that aren't available on the previous Setup tab, such as ramp speeds, DHW tank differential, combining two loads to run at the same time, and configuring multi-boiler applications. System Settings is where you can find site settings, licensing, backup restore, software update, restart boiler, and reset factory defaults. Site settings includes manual pump purge. This feature runs all load pumps for any loads that have been enabled on the boiler and is useful for purging air out of a system or to test pump operation. 
Another notable setting is venting material, where you can change the exhaust vent material from PVC to CPVC or polypropylene, depending on what was used on your installation. Licensing is where you can enable BACnet, if your boiler includes that option. Backup Restore is where you can backup and restore boiler settings, such as load parameters and user settings, using a USB drive. Software Update is where you can perform a software update over a wired internet connection, or use a USB drive or SD card. Restart Boiler is where you can restart the boiler without removing power. Reset Factory Defaults will clear all settings that were configured on the boiler after installation, such as loads and user settings. Now we're back to the More tab again. Network Settings has the Boiler ID for multi-boiler applications, as well as other network settings such as for a static IP address and internet portal registration. Engineer Options is for internal IPC use only. Installer Options is not for typical installations, and is password protected for that reason. Here, you can alter the minimum and maximum firing rate, calibrate the touchscreen, and enable password locking of load settings. If you think you need to adjust one of these settings, please contact technical support for further instruction. Test operation is where you can test monitor and control the fan speed, as well as monitor the flame current. During a call for heat, Test operation can be used to control the firing rate. This is the recommended place for commissioning and performing a combustion analysis. Help is a new page that provides a link to our technical information portal where you can find service parts, videos, documentation and concept drawings. You can enter the link into a browser or simply scan the QR code. If you require further clarification on specific settings, please review our VTAN controller manual found on our technical information portal. You can also contact technical support at 1-844-HEAT-IBC or email at technical support at ibcboiler.com. Thank you for reviewing software 2.0 with our new enhanced UI.